signal is an example of a union switch and signal model H2 searchlight signal. Union Switch and Signal was one of a few manufacturers to make searchlight signals and began producing them after acquiring the Hall Signal Company, the original inventor of the searchlight signal, in 1925. USNS produced several searchlight signal models, all beginning with the letter H, an acknowledgement to the Hall Signal Company. The two indicates that the H2 was the second model developed by USNS, and this was their best selling variant. This particular signal is configured to be used as a ground mount signal, often referred to by railroads as a pot signal. It's mounted to a bracket which can be bolted directly to a concrete pad on the ground and includes a deflecting lens to diffuse the light beam and a debris guard to protect the lenses. Pot signals are typically found in rail yards, terminals, and sidings where limited space or close clearances prevent the signals from being mounted on a mast as most wayside railroad signals are. Wayside railroad signals are a crucial part of railroad safety and efficiency. They are used to convey information to passing trains about whether they may proceed or if they must slow or stop. Rail lines are divided up into fixed sections called blocks. Wayside signals are typically placed at the boundaries between blocks. Within each block, a track circuit is used to detect the presence of a train. This information is fed into the signal system, which is then used to control the aspects that the signals display. Aspect is the railroad term for the color or color combination that a signal displays. A signal's aspect is translated by the railroad signal rules into its indication or the instruction that it conveys. For example, a green aspect gives a clear indication, a yellow aspect gives an approach indication, and a red aspect gives a stop indication. Many more aspects and indications exist, and the number that a signal can give increases if the signal has more than one head. This pot signal on display has a single head, and can therefore only display one color at a time. It is set up to demonstrate five different signal indications. Stop. Restricting. Approach advance approach, and clear. Searchlight signals were one of the earliest successful types of color light signals. Their success was due to the fact that with a single small light bulb running on only 12 volts DC, each signal head could display up to three colors and be visible from over a mile away in broad daylight. H2 searchlight signals accomplish this through the use of a parabolic reflector surrounding the bulb, which reflects most of the bulb's light through the signal's color armature, and then through two lenses which refract the light into a bright, narrow beam. This narrow beam is what gives searchlight signals their name. A searchlight signal head, in a most basic sense, contains two parts, an inner mechanism which contains the bulb, reflector, color armature, and inner lens, and an outer housing which contains the outer lens and provides a secure weatherproof container for the mechanism. The inner mechanism is precisely located inside the housing by a locator pin and two bolts, ensuring that the light beam coming out of the inner lens hits the outer lens at the proper distance and angle. The signal colors are produced by the light beam passing through one of three colored roundels mounted in a rotating armature. Typically, these colors would be red, yellow, and green. The armature is attached to an electromagnetic field coil and counterweights. When no electricity is applied to the field coil, the armature remains centered by the counterweights. This position always contains the red roundel, which means a power failure will always cause the signal to return to red, the most restrictive and therefore the safest position. The field coil is considered biased, which means that the electrical polarity that it is connected to determines the direction that it rotates. When electricity of one polarity is applied, it will rotate the armature to the right, placing the yellow roundel in the light beam. When electricity of the opposite polarity is applied, the armature rotates to the left, placing the green roundel in the light beam. This means that when a searchlight signal goes from yellow to green, it briefly flashes red as the armature moves from one extreme to the other. 
The armature is also connected to electrical contacts, which move with the armature. These can be used by the signal system to verify whether the signal is actually displaying the intended aspect. This signal display uses two railroad relays to control its aspects. A flasher relay is used to flash the bulb for the flashing aspects, and a neutral relay is used to apply power to the armature to control the signal's color. Despite their rugged construction, searchlight signals do have their drawbacks. Their moving parts are subject to wear and tear, and can prove to be expensive to maintain. Their thin light beams are very difficult to see if they are not aimed properly, and dirt on the lenses can significantly decrease their visibility. In response, railroads have been replacing searchlight signals with newer signals, including bright, high-efficiency LED signals, which require minimum maintenance and provide much higher visibility. Despite this, many searchlight signals soldier on, including several on Cuesta Pass, just outside of San Luis Obispo. In the future, the San Luis Obispo Railroad Museum intends to expand its indoor and outdoor signal exhibits to encompass a wider array of signals that the railroads, such as the Southern Pacific, use throughout their existence. Check back soon for news on these new projects.